Elio guys, and welcome back. In today's old video though, we're taking a look once again at uh, Valkyrie. Hopefully this is the last time, but you never know. But if they change her up again in the future, I guess I'll have to do another video. But quick shout out right before we begin to everyone that had voted in the community tab because that's a really good way of letting me know what videos you guys want to see next because I have all this knowledge and I, you know, it's in my brain, so I don't really need to view it, but let's go ahead and get right into it. Alright, so starting off here, we have Fire Valk. Uh, this is the Ultimate uh, Evolution Edition, just in case you guys don't know, especially like newer players. If you come over here to the Astro Guide real quick and you hit the Ultimate Evolution tab, we get her at her strongest. Uh, and of course, this requires all three of her trinkets, which is a set, I do believe, with two pieces being. You get the added 10% defense, which could help tank your mons be more tankier and improve survivability. But like I said before, we do have Fire Valk here. Uh, she is a balanced type, and she's coming in with 39k HP, uh, 3k attack, and 3.1k defense. So let's go ahead and take a look at her skills real quick. So uh, for her three-star skill, she has morale boost, which grants 100% chance to restore 50% of her own SP when attacking, meaning every time that she attacks, she doesn't have to rely on orbs to get into her five-star skill, which is a stun with an 80% chance for one turn. That's not very good. Uh, it, it should be higher than what it is, but it's going to be acceptable depending on how you build her. But this is purely just a crowd control mon, a mon that operates on making sure that the other mons that you're fighting hopefully cannot act. So her main job is surviving and spamming stuns. That's the whole selling point of Fire Valk. And then we see with her ultimate evolution skill, she has resistance down, which grants a whopping 17% chance to reduce the enemy's resistance for two turns upon attacking an enemy suffering stun. Now, I covered in the last ultimate uh, evolution video, which was on uh, Persephone. If you haven't checked that out, feel free to check it out. But uh, both of the wood and fire were reliant on sap being applied to them which actually no just fires uh, reliant on set being applied to it which isn't too bad uh wood you have to have attack down on it though which we're not going to get into that but this one is i mean it's still dirt nasty low probability but if you're running a composition that already supports mons that stun say for instance you have dark merlin you have light leo and you have fire valk all on the same team well, this could potentially be a lot more useful depending on how rng goes because at any point in time, hopefully the other opposite side is stunned. So if you can get resistance down applied to them while they're stunned, then the next time your stunners come in and get that stun action going off on them, it could potentially work out for you. So I don't think this ultimate evolution skill is bad at all. Like, I'm, I'm okay with it. Probability could be higher, but I mean, there are obviously worse decisions that they have made. Uh, but let's take a look at her skill books real quick. So morale boost receives a 20% damage boost. Wow. And then stun receives a 25% damage boost, goes up to 90% for two turns. So now we're talking, boys. Now we're talking. So if you want to book up your fire Valk and you ultimate evote her, she's probably like one of my favorite Valks. Um, then just pray to the gods that you get it all into her five star skill and just keep it at that. But overall, I think she is a solid PvP slash clan versus clan unit. Alright, moving forward though, we do have Water Valk, who is an attacker type. She's coming in with 30k HP, 4.2k attack, and then 2.8k defense. So let's go ahead and take a look at these skills real quick before we get into it, you guys. So for her 3-star skill, she has Predator, which increases her damage dealt by 50%. And then for her 5-star skill is Defense Down, which grants 100% chance to apply Defense Down uh, on the enemies for 2 turns. So overall, not bad. So her damaging skill is on her 3-star skill. And then a 5 star skill kind of just helps her to apply more damage because you have Predator already with 50% which is pretty high but if you shred an enemy's defense and then hit him with Predator again, uh, hopefully they should be dead. If not, it depends on what you're fighting like if you're bringing your Water Valk into Titans, congratulations uninstall MSL because you don't understand what you're doing. But in, in, in any other scenario where you need Water Nukers, she's obviously one of the go-to mons. And then for her ultimate skill, she has Attack Up, which upon using a super skill increases the ally's attack power by 50% for two turns. So once she gets her active off for her super skill, which I do believe is what three times with her five star skill, uh, she can boost up the attack power of the entire squad. I think this is a great addition to her because her main point is just damage, damage, damage. 
while I personally don't subscribe to the Water Vault Club. I mean, she is a good damage dealer. My only like reasoning behind not liking Water Valk is that there hasn't been any scenarios for me personally speaking where I require a Water Nuker because there's Dark Mons. So any other scenario, I understand that people don't have the Mon Box or have been playing as long as I have. Any other scenario though, that's fine. I mean, feel free to ultimate Evo her. I don't think this is a bad lineup, especially depending on what else that you're running with her ultimate skill because if she gets attack up, you have Predator going, you have Defense Down going, and attack up all at once, well, she's gonna be hitting like a mother trucker. So I don't think this is too bad of ultimate skill. I don't really consider it a game changer for the ultimate skill, but with her stats being increased, I can, you know, I'm okay with it. Basically the gist of this is I think her ultimate skill is acceptable. There, I said it. Uh, but Predator gets a 20% damage boost and then Defense Down receives a 25% damage boost. So all in all, book's not really worth it unless you just happen to love your Water Valk. Moving forward though, we do have Wood Valk over here. She's a balance type coming in with 36k HP, 3.2k attack, and then 3.2k defense. So decent stat distribution. I haven't really been mentioning that too much because their stats as an at 5, in my opinion, are perfectly fine. So I've just been glossing over that. But but yeah, decent stat distribution. So let's go ahead and take a look at her skills real quick. So for her 3-star skill, she has Battle Rush, which... All of her attacks restore 20% of her own HP and SP, meaning that she is not only a self-sustainer, but she can reliably get to her 5-star skill. Now, this isn't as fast or as quickly or as reliable as a self-morale booster, but, I mean, it's arguably better than nothing. Uh, and then... And then for her 5-star skill, she has Adrenaline, which attacks restore allies HP into an amount equal to 10% of her own max HP. So the more HP that you have for her 5-star skill, the more that she's going to heal the entire squad. And then her ultimate skill is Damage Reduction, which upon using her super skill, reduces damage done to all allies for 2 turns. Uh, this is probably 20%. Um, I don't really have anything to say about this other than congratulations, it's Wood Valk. Like... She had the potential to do damage, and wood mons nowadays are being used a lot more than what they were before, but it's just the whole adrenaline and battle rush idea is just geared towards her surviving, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't really contribute anything to any type of PvP situation. You can argue in clan versus clan, especially against like newer players, that they can't kill her, so you can basically stall out the team, which, I mean, we do have fever mode to take into account too, but that's probably the only scenario I could see this happening in, unless you had st some type of spicy set on her. Because, I mean, Fire Draca isn't the PvP meta anymore, but why would you bring in a Mon that just doesn't die and that's literally it? Like, I want a Mon that doesn't die, but also prevents the enemy from acting. I want a Mon that doesn't die, but also destroys the enemy. Not just a, basically, a, a block for them to hit for... <laughs> whatever amount of time it takes for them to either beat me because of fever mode or beat me because they end up destroying wood valk but i mean we can't have everything and be super duper op they had a chance to kind of tweak her but wood valk is just here hanging out uh she was my first evo 3 valk at the time but yeah i mean unless you have some type of spicy super duper big brain set with her her ultimate evolution is obviously very, very optional in my opinion. Battle Rush does go to 25% and gets a 20% damage boost. And then Adrenaline also receives a whopping 20% damage boost as well. So once again, nothing really spicy in terms of Nat 5 books, but that's okay. Moving on next though, finally we have what the people have come for. This is what they wanted the review for. Uh, we have Light Valk who's a balance type and she's coming in with 40k HP, 3.4k attack, and then about 3.3k defense here. So decent stat distribution. Uh, she is one of the selectable Light uh, Nat 5s that you can pick. Or if you want to go and donate, you can pick her up and if you decide to choose Light Arthur instead. But hopefully my analysis here will help you make that decision. Uh, just, you know... Just to be a little bit more sure about your decision, shall I say. Uh, but let's take a look at her skills real quick. So for her 3-star skill, she has Shock, which grants 100% chance to shock the enemy for one turn. And then for her 5-star skill, she has Damage Reduction, which reduces all allies' uh, damage. Rough, I, I think it's 50% for 2 turns. So with Shock, she's able to do some crowd control, which 100% shock for one turn, it... It's fine. It's nothing amazing. It's fine. And then damage reduction, the whole selling point of that is just to reduce damage on the squad. So she 
is literally just a support unit and not really here for damage. Even though her attack stat is pretty decent, it's still just a balanced mon in terms of damage. And then for her ultimate skill though, she does get Battle Rush. Which, when her HP is at 50% or below, attacks restore 10% of allies' HP and SP. So this really kind of defines Light Valk, in my opinion, of being a more defensive mon than offensive. Because damage reduction in itself doesn't do anything for damage. Shock, you can argue Light Yuki has double shock. Yeah, Light Yuki has double shock, but she also has a very, very good attack stat. And, I mean, shock does reduce your damage a little bit, but she isn't here to do damage. She's literally not here to do damage. She is here to make sure other mons aren't getting clapped. And she is here to apply some crowd control and just be an overall, like, just stone cold support unit. Because Battle Rush here is indicating that if she gets lower than 50% HP, she's going to start healing the whole entire squad. She's out here shocking. She also has some damage reduction action going on here. So her main point is just purely, purely support. Uh, but with books, though, we can see that Shot gets a 20% damage boost and goes to 100% two turns. Okay. Okay. Damage reduction receives a 20% damage boost. Doesn't matter. So, if you want to book up your Light Valk, just pray that you can get it all into that three-star skill. And that's pretty much it. Uh, in terms of her ultimate evolution skill, though, in my opinion, I think it's fine. I mean, there's not much they could really do with, with Valk. Because she isn't really there for DPS in the first place. So if she can get Battle Rush the entire squad, well, that's going to hopefully inspire someone to try and kill her quickly. Because damage reduction is going to go off because she's gaining SP. And not to mention, she's also healing everyone and preventing them from taking as much damage as they should be going. So I think it's pretty fair in my opinion. The only advice though I would have to say with contracts without getting too much into it because once Odin gets her ultimate evolution, maybe I'll break that down a little bit more, is that Light Arthur is pure DPS, uh, Light Valk is more of a support unit more than anything else, and then Light Odin is once again more of a support unit but more dedicated towards healing and not so much bringing support to the entire squad. But Regardless of what mon that you have in terms of the light contract, depending on how you set them up is how you're going to use them. Are you going to use Light Valk in your offensive PvP team? I probably wouldn't. Would you, would you use her in your defensive team? Yeah. Alright, and then moving forward, we do have Dark Valk here who's a tank type. Uh, she's coming in with 53k HP, 2.6k attack, and then 2.7k defense. So, she's a tank. She has plenty of HP, 53k, which, what does Dark Arthur have at EVO? Okay, so Dark Arthur has roughly about 2k more, 1k more, whatever, so he's still top dog in terms of the HP, but her HP isn't too far behind that. But as always, it doesn't really depend on the stats of the Mon, as much as it depends on the skills and the stats, so let's go ahead and take a look at her skills real quick. So for her 3 star skill, she has Stun, which grants a 90% chance to stun an enemy for 2 turns, okay. Okay, I like that. And then for her 5 star skill, she has Seal, which grants 80% chance to seal the enemies uh, for 3 turns. Once again, pretty good. Not a super duper big fan of Seal, but since Stun is basically controllable, aka if you play manually, I can control hopefully who I stun, I'm, I'm down with the Seal. Because 3 turns is pretty chunky if it sticks. And then we can see for her ultimate skill, she has Shield, which upon using her super skill, grants a shield to allies proportional to her own max HP. So... If I'm reading that correctly, this is a shield based off of her max HP and not individual shields based off whatever mines that you have on your squad's max HP. Which, her coming in with 53k HP is pretty potent, especially with two more HP gems, plus trinkets, enhancements, etc. That's cool. There's nothing super duper game breaking about this. The best part is though, is they're kind of supporting more survivability out of Dark Valk by having her shield go up if you decide to ignore her for whatever reason. So her main selling point once again is exactly like uh, Light Valk where she's more of a defensive unit versus an offensive unit. You could use her offensively but I don't know why you would unless you literally needed her for stun in a PvE situation. But PvP, purely defensive mon, clan versus clan, same thing. Uh, she would go well paired up with another stunner like Light Leo or Dark Succubus for example or if you want to bring in your Fire Valk too to mix it up with some RGB action. But overall I think her ultimate skill is fine. There's nothing terrible about it or anything like that. I mean she has plenty of HP and her shield supports HP so there is synergy there and then her 3 and 5 star skill already are pretty good in my opinion. 
because I do think, uh, I mean, without seeing the Dark Odin Ultimate Evolution, I do think Dark Valk is a pretty solid uh, pick for the Dark Contract. Uh, Book-wise, though, Stun receives a 20% damage boost, and it goes up to 100% for two turns. And then Seal receives a 25% damage boost, and it goes up to 100% for three turns. So books here for Dark Valk are pretty spicy either way you go about it. I would mainly want that stun, but they're still pretty spicy. So I think overall, it's a really good choice right there. Um, I think all the Valks in terms of their ultimate evolution skills are a wonderful addition to the game. There's nothing groundbreaking or nothing too spicy. Like I would say like with Fire Arthur having Water Edge, in my opinion, is a pretty unique skill. It's nothing i never seen done before. And also with Light Arthur, I didn't ever picture in my mind that he would have Hunter and Puncture, which is absolutely just bonkers. But those are offensive mons. Valks have different purposes, so don't go comparing, you know, apples to oranges in this scenario. I do think Light and Dark Valk are perfectly fine, and all the other ones too, depending on how you feel about them. Because unlike Super Evolutions, Ultimate Evolutions aren't permanent, so if there's any changes in the future to the game, Simply pay the fine of unequipping it, and congratulations, you can now apply those trinkets to a different Valk. But, uh, to end the video off here, I would say that uh, number one, at least in my opinion, is Dark Valk. Uh, number two is going to be Light Valk. Number three, you could argue in between Fire and Water, but I'm going to go and go with Fire just because, well, I... <laughs> I don't subscribe to the, the club of Valk, but if you want to say number three is water, it, it doesn't matter to me at the end of the day. As long as you know that number five uh, is absolutely wood. Absolutely wood. Poor wood, Valk, man. But if you guys like the video, feel free to like it. If you guys haven't considered subscribing, go ahead and hit that button so you don't miss out on the latest, greatest, and more from your boy Elio. If there's another monster review that needs to be done, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Or before you decide to hit me up in the comments, I do have an Astromon Mon review playlist that you can click on and search before you're like, Elio, do a video on this because there's some times where you guys are like, hey, do a video on this. And I'm just like, bro, here's a link. If it's outdated, I'll redo it. If it's not outdated, just use the link, bro. There's a playlist right here for you to get the knowledge from me to you. But yep, that's pretty much it, you guys. See ya.